Hey, so for this video, we're going to quickly look at all the different switch types and just do a quick overview generally of what's included. Um, so let's go to, I'm just going to go to the main floor of the example project that comes with your download. And there's a section called switches. And just like most of the other sections, there is both 3D versions and 2D versions. And the switches come in two varieties. There is the wall hosted variety and then the, the non-hosted variety that still look like they're on a wall, but they're not hosted to anything so that you could place a switch conceivably anywhere you wanted to without having to be tied down to a wall. The other thing you'll notice is the switches uh, have two flavors similar to the electrical outlets. If I look at it in 3D, there is a rocker switch style that looks like this. Or there's your traditional flip switch, like a toggle. So here's toggle or rocker style, and you can change that if you go to, if you click on the switch, that is a type property. So if you hit the edit type button, you can see right here, you can pick from rocker style or toggle style and click OK, and it'll change the 3D version of the switch. And so now we've got toggle switches here. Okay, so the switch family is a little more interesting than the outlet family. The outlet families, when you, it's, so for example, all these wall outlets, they're the same family and you can just pick all the different types that you want to place from that one family. The switch family is similar you click on the switch and it's one family, but there is not more than one type. There's just one type and it says custom. And so the way you use the switch family is you pick either wall hosted or non wall hosted. And so I'm just going to create one and let's just find a wall to place it on. I'll just place that switch right there. And it basically, you start with just one switch and you just have a whole bunch of options over here when you look at its instance parameters. So let's just take a look at, at what those options are. So when you click on it, the first option is the number of switches that you want. So right now, by default, it's just set to one and it's a single pole switch. So that that's a lot of the time that's what you're looking for but a lot of time that's not what you're looking for. So what you can do is you can click on the switch and you can add switches to it up to six, uh, up to a six gang switch, right? Because practically speaking, even six gang is pretty, that's you're getting a pretty big box to try to fit in a stud bay. So most of the time you're less than a six gang, but these will go up to a six gang. So let's just see what happens. So I can click this toggle up to two and now you can see it shows two switches. And if I look at this in 3D, let's go look at where we just placed it on the side of the house here. You can see it updates in 3D to have a two gang box. And if we take it back down to one, it switches it to one. So let's just go all the way up to six. And there you go, here's your six gang. So this is great because traditionally the past families that you use for switches don't um, they don't give you the option to have a multiple gang switch box. If you want multiple switches in one location, you'd have to just, um, here, let me show you what you'd have to do. You'd take the single, you'd take this down to one and you just, you'd put two switches right next to each other, right? This is the traditional way of doing it. If you don't have a good family, you know, if you want three switches right by each other, you have to do this. And then the other thing is. To keep the symbols looking good in floor plan, you have to space those switches apart. So in 3D, it, it doesn't look right. So if you're doing if you're doing renderings or if you're doing 3D walkthroughs with your clients, the switches start to mess up the walls. So a lot of people hide the switches because they look so bad. Well, we didn't want that to happen. We want them to look good in 3D. And we also want them to look correct in floor plan. So the way we did that is we just allow you to have 
a multi-gang switch. And again, the symbols are not tied to the location of the switch plate. So now, if you really have a six gang switch box, this is really what it would look like. Or more realistically, let's just take it down to four. That happens more often. And so it would just look like this. And then in your floor plan, it also looks nice. Okay, so the next thing you might be wondering is how, what if I need like a three, three way or a four way switch? So what this does over here is you have up to six toggles right here where you can select what each switch, what type of switch each one of these four switches is. Or if you go all the way up to six, you can pick all, all six. So let's say the first one, we'll just keep it as a single pole, but then maybe the second is a dimmer switch. So if you see that over here, it added a D to signify the second one is a dimmer switch. And then let's make the third one, let's make it a three-way. And then maybe the fourth one is a four-way. And then maybe the fifth one <clears throat> is a dusk to dawn sensor, or even better, let's make it a motion sensor switch. So you can see it says MO. All right, now, if I look at it in 3D, you can see there's my dimmer switch with the dimmer knob. Here's my motion switch with the motion knob. So now it looks correct. Now all we need to do is clean it up in floor plan. You can see now that we added some of those symbols like the D and the three and the MO, it's kind of getting, the readability is not great. So if you click on the switch, you can, adjust the symbol spacing. So right now it's six inches, but if we say we wanted a foot between each symbol, now it's easy to read. It still looks good in 3D because we didn't change anything in 3D, but in the floor plan, it's now more readable. Probably a foot's a little much. Let's do 10 inches and see what that does. Maybe that's a little better, um, or maybe it's not. But it, we give you the ability to adjust the spacing to whatever you think looks good. And the other thing is just like the outlets, you can give it an offset from the wall. So if you want the symbol to be, you know, one foot off of the wall, you can do that. Again, I like this for when I put an outlet directly underneath a switch, which happens from time to time. I can show my outlet down low and I can still show my switch symbols up high. So let's put this back to half of an inch. The other thing you can do is you can move the justification. So you'll notice right now the out the switch plate you can see is this thick line and the switches symbols they're centered they're center justified on the base plate or on the the switch plate. But if maybe let's uh, pick a new host maybe these are next to a doorway right? Um, I already have all my doors. Let's do an exterior door or something. Oops. All right, let's just put it. So I'm going to place my switch plate right next to this door. But now my switch symbols are running across my door. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to take this down to four just to simplify it a little bit. So do you see how they're running into my door, which I don't like? The other thing you can do is you can pick the justification. So right here it says symbol justification and it says center currently. So if I say left, it'll shift everything to the left side, right? It'll left justify it or, and that fixes it. But say my door was on the other side, you can also right justify it and it'll flip it. So it just pushes the symbols the way that you may need them depending on your floor plan. Okay, then um, similar to our other families, you can change the material of the light switches. And I already talked about how you can change them from a rocker switch to a toggle switch. 
And then of course you can change the placement height as well. So if you wanted it up higher than four feet, which is kind of the standard switch height, you could do it higher or lower if you wanted to. And that is pretty much all you need to know in order to use your, oh, that's not true. The last thing is wiring them to the lights. So you'll notice if you click on the light switch, there's these little symbols that are like a square with an X through them. That's your connection point. So if you've never used um, wires, electrical wiring in Revit, uh, this might be a new concept for you. Um, but if you are used to using the systems command, the wire command, so if you, let me just show you where that is. If you go up to your ribbon under the systems tab, which by the way, if you're using Revit Lite, you don't have this option. You're just going to have to use detail lines to do your wiring. And that's probably the best you're gonna get. So you can ignore this part if you're a Revit Lite user. You can still use these light switches. Just everything that I've set up to this point still applies. You just won't be able to use this wire command. So again, on the systems panel or tab of the ribbon, there's a wire command. And if you click the wire command, you'll see when you hover over the connection point for one of these switches, you get a circle with an X through it. That means it's connecting to the switch. And now you can connect the other end to our lights. And our lights also have electrical connection points. And you can see when I hover over the, point, the connection point, I get a circle with an X through it. So now that switch is connected to the light. And the beauty, the reason you, it's preferred to do it this way is because now when I move, if I move my switches, the wire connection moves with it. If I move my lights, let me see if I can grab my light. Sorry, there's too many things getting in the way. All right, so if I move my light, it doesn't break my connections. If I would have done this with detail lines, you'd have to redraw the detail lines. And then if you click on the switches again, you can also change the electrical connection offset from the wall. Um, I don't necessarily know why someone would want to do that, but we have allowed you to do that. So right now the connection point is 11 inches from the wall, but if you wanted it if you wanted the connection point to instead be at the base of the wall, you could do that by changing the offset. Or if you change the scale of the drawing. So all of my families are optimized for a quarter inch scale because that's the most common residential scale for drawings. So they automatically work out of the box at a quarter inch scale. But if you're using a different scale, this, you're going to want to pay particular close attention to all of these symbol, the symbol spacing, the symbol offset, and the electrical connection offset settings. Those will be your best friend when you're doing it at a different scale. Okay, I hope this helps, and I hope this saves you a ton of time, and um, I hope even more that it allows your drawings to look better than they ever have. My biggest problem before I created these was just constantly fighting to make the graphics look good in plan and then having to figure out the problems in 3D that that, that created. It seemed like I was always sacrificing one or the other and I couldn't have both. So part of this family is making both 3D and 2D look good plus improve the workflow for connecting wires to lights. That was another thing is I always thought you know, I did my best to do my lighting and switch layout before I would make the wire connection so that I didn't have to keep redrawing stuff. But inevitably, I'd have to redo a whole room and I'd have to delete all of my detail lines and redo all the wiring, which I don't have to do anymore. So, all right, good luck and thanks for using our families.